In an increasingly connected world, cybercrime is an issue no matter where you are. And it's something that affects both individuals and businesses alike. Last year, 56% of Middle East companies lost more than half a million dollars each to cyber attacks. That's over 20% above the global average. Even more alarming, only 25% of companies have an information security strategy in place. We're in Dubai's Internet City to find out what's being done to bridge this digital shortfall. Global networking company Cisco recently invested millions of dollars in the Middle East fighting cybercrime. Shukri Eid is a regional managing director based in Dubai. So cybersecurity, of course, is a threat that just crosses borders, so there is no region or, or, or economic sector that is immune to it. But in the Middle East, we can um, see clearly that uh, whether it's in terms of the number of companies that are under significant cyber attacks or the impact of those attacks in terms of the productivity loss or financial loss we will see that the Middle East actually exceeds the average numbers uh, globally. And that does uh, indicate your point around, yes, there are a lot of work to be done here in the Middle East to, uh, to counter the cybersecurity threat. Are people thinking in the region fast enough about the human capital needed? You can spend a lot of money. Uh, sovereign wealth is not an issue here, but how about the training of human capital, would you suggest? Uh, there is a lot of attention that still needs to be, to be made there. If I look at the fact of uh, whether we are actually able to go and counter all that cyber threat, we believe that security alerts in general, only 46% of the alerts that you get in an organization are actually investigated leaving more than half of the threats were leaving you, you know, out of capacity to go and address them. And that's largely either due to budget or lack of quality tools or lack of integration of those tools and, of course, lack of enough skills. We believe that worldwide there is a shortage of, a, of one million cybersecurity specialists in the world. By 2019, we think that gap is going to be 1.5 million. Today, crimes are different than yesterday's crimes. They can burn up your power grid just by hacking. We hear a lot of stories. We have to be ready for any attack. As the director of Polytechnic Institute Abu Dhabi, Dr. Ahmed Alawar is charged with educating a new generation of cybersecurity experts. Penetration testing is a technique given to the students so that they can ethically hack any system. And when we say ethically, we mean there is a boundary crossing that limit becomes illegal. The students are taught skills that are increasingly valued in the modern workforce. The overall lack of cybersecurity professionals means salaries in this field are 9% more than those for other IT positions. Yusuf Harsi is a senior student at the Institute's Information Security Program. I didn't choose this field randomly. My passion was to be effective in any governmental organization to protect their assets or information that goes beyond the border of the country. International IT companies like Microsoft and Oracle lend their expertise, ensuring students receive the very latest cybersecurity training, tailoring their experience to the needs of big business. All these technologies required skills in terms of information security are embedded in different courses. So students are dealing with it. So once they graduate, they are already qualified to work in those organizations with those technologies. There is a global need of skilled manpower in the cyber security. This is increasing at an alarming rate. How to eliminate this number? That need for digital security is something that students understand well. Confidential data information for my country is going through uh, lots of routes. Uh, once these informations have been disclosed, it's going to be a huge, huge problem for uh, our nation's security. There must be some students who is uh, capable of protecting uh, these informations. But while tomorrow's frontline workers against cybercrime go through their paces, out in the real world today, no business or person is immune from the threat. I personally received many hacks attempts using my name. This attack was from a different country. All the world is changing very fast. And if they don't catch up, they will be at the bottom of the list and they will be a target for attacks. Dubai's Internet City is one of the largest ICT hubs in the Middle East and North Africa. It's home to Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, Canon, amongst others. 
The Free Zone first opened its doors nearly 17 years ago and currently hosts over 1,600 companies and more than 24,000 professionals. The aim? To foster innovation and create a knowledge-based economy. But Dubai is not the only player in this high-tech field. Tel Aviv is widely known as the tech startup scene of the Middle East and North Africa. But the country is expanding south to develop what it calls a cyber capital. Orn Lieberman has the story. A late night pub crawl through Jerusalem's Machne Yehuda market. An unlikely place to do business, perhaps. But as the produce stands shut down, the ideas come to life. A meeting of the minds for Israel's youngest cyber entrepreneurs. They start screening kids at the age of 14. So you get access to the best talent pool, they get into the military, and guess what? After three to five years, they are released back to the commercial world, and they become the entrepreneurs of the next wave of uh, cyber companies. Israel is building a cybersecurity hub in the southern city of Beersheba, attracting multinational companies to work with students and startups. What's unique about the Beersheba ecosystem is that all of the players come together here in one concentrated environment. The investors bring the money, the students bring the ideas, the military brings the expertise, and the companies bring the interest. It's both incubator and accelerator to the country's growing cyber industry. In 2016, Israel pulled in 15% of the world's private sector cyber investment, according to the National Cyber Bureau, an increase from a year earlier despite a global slowdown in cyber investment. The country has about 400 cybersecurity companies, from startups to world leaders. A growing number are in Beersheba. The spirit of entrepreneurship and new companies and things that you would have never associated with a town before are alive and kicking now to the degree that it's uh, uh, busting at the seams. To, to some degree, there's not enough space. There's not enough uh, room to grow, even. One of the first companies to come to Beersheba was Coronet. This company of 35 people secures wireless connections instead of devices or servers. Co-founder Dror Lievel shows me their attack lab where they test the latest hacking tools. This specific device, for example, is designed to hack uh, a wireless network and it simplifies everything so the attacker doesn't need to understand the technology at all. Outside Coronet's office, cybersecurity startups work side by side, sharing ideas and information. Next door, Ben Gurion University has its cybersecurity research center, where students learn in the malware lab and in the IoT lab, the Internet of Things. One student is working to secure tablets brought into commercial cockpits. It works well because at the end of the day, high tech industry needs employees. And we, as a university, we are generating many engineers. Actually, we are the biggest generating of engineers in Israel today, Ben Gurion University. In Israel's startup nation, Beersheba has become the cyber city. Orrin Lieberman, CNN, Beersheba. I'm back with Shukri Eid. He's the managing director of the East Region for Cisco in the Middle East. I wanted to pick up on the thought of comparing, say, a Silicon Valley that you have in California, obviously, with a Dubai Internet City or the other clusters we see uh, throughout the region. How different are they in terms of their DNA? I think, in my opinion, traditionally, the ecosystem there in the Silicon Valley is what's really special about that part of the world because it's multiple stakeholders, including R&D and research, you know, in, in universities, so more on the education and academia, financial services, giving back up to starts up and entrepreneur, as well as large and smaller companies with a, uh, a large base of customers. I think in Dubai and the, and the other regions, it was more about probably uh, pumping up capabilities in the infrastructure for a group of people in a limited real estate uh, space and giving them a lot of the services that can allow them to go and expand the business um, in the region. Uh, that's traditional. I think increasingly we can see in the past few years that some of those R&D initiatives, there is a more, more entrepreneurship, more startup mentality in the region as well. Physically, you feel very secure, for example, in the Gulf states, but it doesn't seem to apply, at least that mindset, when it comes to cybersecurity. Is that a fair comment? It is to some extent. I think people here are physically very secure. I think the nature of the cyber uh, threat uh, in this connected world is very different because it can be remote, and I think people are probably more conscious about that.
fascinating because you have energy infrastructure, water desalination, you know, smart grids, for example. Uh, this is critical infrastructure that needs a cyber barrier, if you will. I think in the future and the way the, um, the nature of the attack is evolving, whether in terms of the capabilities of the attackers, uh, I think all their motivations, so moving as well from only financial motivations, which will continue to be a priority, but also acting as a political agent on behalf of other countries to undermine the livelihood and the um, uh, credibility of some countries and large organizations, all will put more more of the threat also on the critical national infrastructure.